Curious Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And in this episode, I am going to be looking at the 1986 comic Life Brigade. I've got issue one and two here. This was my Blue Comet comics. And uh, Blue Comet is the name of one of the heroes in the book. Um, I, for a long time, I thought there were only these two issues. Um, and then somebody on the Power Comics Collective Facebook page, uh, John B., um, told me that there was a third issue. And uh, so I went looking for it online and I did find pictures of the cover. I couldn't find it for sale anywhere. This first issue, they, they must have printed a lot of copies of this because you can find this really easily in uh, a lot of dollar bins. And issue two is pretty easy to find too. Although I think they probably printed even less of that, maybe sales for volume one. Issue three, I had never seen. I didn't even realize there, there was an issue three, um, but it's out there. Uh, this is um, the Life Brigade uh, part of this comic is by Craig Storman. And, um, you know, there's usually, uh, in these two issues, there's Life Brigade story in the front, and then there's a, a backup feature. And um, Life Brigade is a... Uh, this is like I, I, they're they're like astronauts having space adventures, but they're also superheroish. Um, you know, they're they've got superpowers and and uh, they're going on these kind of adventures. Although they're more, um, you know, so so here's the setup. I'll, I'll just read you the thing. In the years of overpopulation, the people of Earth were getting desperate. Food was hard to find. Water contaminated. Civilization was starting to fall back to chaos. In a last-ditch effort to save mankind, plans were made to find another planet that would support life. In secret, a small group of very special people went out among the stars. So here's our people looking over uh, these different planets. Um, and occasionally they're getting a, into a kerfluffle here because these people... Um, you know, uh, there's a mysterious box that's been buried. They've seen this happen, so now they're going to investigate what's going on using their powers. She's, she's got the telepathy, and this is the ray gun kid, and there's Blue Comet. This box, it turns out that these other characters we're fighting over has a robot who puts himself together. And then they're talking about how maybe they can help each other out on these missions. Now, I'm going to talk here a little bit about the... I won't go into too much of the story because it's there's not much of one. So um, I don't want to give away what little there is. But I will point out that the art... Although I do think this falls under the collective of uh, Power Comics... Um, you know, it, it's on the it's on the very cusp of it. Because quite frankly, this this uh, art is not as awkward, and the story is cliche, but it's not really super terrible like the the very best of Power Comics are. This is more like you know some of the earlier independent kind of stuff, like this even this like you might have found this in the seventies or eighties. Um, yes, it's it's weird kind of art, but it's it's because it's really stylized. It's not really. The kind of bad that that you would think of as uh, real power comics. See, there's some really interesting stuff going on here. And like I said, some of the faces are, are a little, you know, and figures are a little stiff. But uh, generally, I think this is pretty well done. There's a monster. Not much one there. I do like this, these panels here. This is very much like, a, you know, like Basil Wolverton's end of the world drawings in the. Uh... Now this this looks a little power comic. Uh, maybe maybe there was a little t too much rushing going on there, um, and then they have some pinups.
There's the, there's a there's a nice look at the monster. All right, and here's uh, Blazing Tales is, what is it, four or five pages? It's a five-page little adventure. It's uh, furry animals. It's kind of like... Uh, Kind of like DuckTales or something. And uh, again, pretty interesting art. <laughs> this last panel doesn't look like too much like DuckTales. <laughs> but um, not bad. Here's, here's issue two. Um, nice look. This this layout, of course, that's, that's a little Power Comics looking. You know, it's not... Uh, not the greatest team drawing, not very well balanced or anything. But uh, again, I think a lot of this is uh, pretty well done. Here's some more. These buildings are a little, uh, little awkward, a little rushed, maybe. Um, it's not a bad vehicle, though. I think there's some good stuff here. Alien races. Pretty cool. So, and uh, the backup though in this one. So, so where we, I, I now that's why I need to find uh, the third issue to find out what's going on with this, this alien race. Um, the backup in this one is, uh, this artwork, the way the bodies are drawn, it reminds me of um, kind of fashion artwork because everybody's so thin and <laughs> they're, they're, this is uh, very much, it, 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 it's, it's Venice Beach, right? Uh, yeah, Venice Beach. There's break dancing, there's uh, roller skates on the beach and... Uh, there's five strangers are all just end up bumping into each other and this mysterious figure. And it turns out they've all got, um, they have a destiny to fulfill. They are going to be Earth's saviors because they are all special people. And this uh, character is collecting them together. So the beginning. Um, and here's some. Uh, this is readers' art page. So this is fan art they got already. So pretty fun stuff. Um, and I definitely, uh, I definitely want to uh, find issue three and check it out and see where they're they're taking this. Uh, I mean. Are they going to be able to find a new planet for the, for the people of Earth to move to? Or is that alien going to screw up all their plans? Um, maybe I'll find out in issue three.